Lane Saturday, you said you wanted to watch a film before you evaluated the scrimmage, have you? And what are, what are your thoughts? I mean, this kind of sounds coach speak, but I mean, there were good things, there were bad things. Um, I mean, it was kind of in the middle on everything, you know, whether it's offense, defense, or position groups where you kind of get excited about some things and you're still nervous about others. We tackled the entire time, which is kind of unusual for us, um, just because like we've talked about the question marks of all the new players, especially defensively and, you know, being able to see them in as live of situations as we can put them in. So, you know, a lot of guys got to play because there were a number of injuries in the secondary. So uh, that part's good, but I can't really tell you where we are right now. I mean, you guys know we just give everybody chances and evaluate not by what you've done before or your stars in recruiting or anything. And, you know, like the quarterbacks, like Ken K. Dent probably played the best of the three. So <clears throat> we still have a good solid week here where we're still in training camp mode and another scrimmage, uh, you know, before we really start to get out of that and more into in-season mode. When, when's the next scrimmage? Uh, Saturday. You said there were things that were just kind of in the middle and, you know, some things you're excited about, some things not. But what was kind of the biggest, you know, thing you were just happy to see out of all of them or out of a particular one? I think, you know, we, for the first time here, have some good depth in the defensive line. Uh, so that's encouraging. I think offensively, the new pieces have come together well so far. Um, you know, because you really got I mean, offhand, just think about receivers. You got four guys, um, you know, new and doing good things and a couple running backs and really two new tight ends. So there's a lot of new parts that are, are doing good things. In the receivers room, how are you seeing guys like Dennis kind of find their way and just how are you seeing depth overall kind of being made, especially after looking at film Saturday? Yeah, I, I mean, the, the way you're used to roster and depth working obviously has changed because um, you're massive turnover. So it used to be, you know, you had three years with guys. So it's interesting when you may mention Danis because it's one of the few players I feel like we have and um, has made some plays last year and continues to step up. Um, just needs to be consistent and have a good shot to play for us. You brought up injuries. Just how are you guys coming out of the first scrimmage health-wise? And is there anything you're concerned could linger into the season, or is it more just nicks and bruises and stuff? I think in typical fashion, you know, the assumption is you tackle, you're going to have all these injuries. <clears throat> Almost all of our injuries were prior to the scrimmage, not during the scrimmage, you know. And so uh, there's not really many new ones. And uh, I do not think there's – there's really any long-term ones, so outside of, I think, Hess. Uh, DeAndre Prince had that pick on the, the last play of the scrimmage. I know it's, it's a pretty deep defensive backs room, but w w where is he kind of right now, and where has he kind of grown uh, over the last uh, – over the stretch? Yeah, Prince has done a great job, um, really great camp, and uh, is playing as good as anybody back there, so excited to see has really matured over his time here, you know, leaving and coming back and all that. So um, one of our better stories that way. Uh, I know you kind of moved some guys around O-line Saturday, just kind of how your approach was to the scrimmage, but how are you seeing kind of guys shake out in the, in the O-line group? Yeah, like I said, you know, we took Nick out. He didn't play a whole lot. Um, you know, made some double switches just to see what it would look like and, um, and have some young guys playing really well. So... You know, that's a good thing. Um, I'm not saying as far as long as the defensive line, but there is, you know, I would guess there's a pretty good argument that we are deeper than we've been here on the offensive line um, in our three years. Coach, this is kind of personal, but you sort of, oh opened, you sort of opened the door today with your tweet about this, 
this woman about changing your life and everything. Have you had some kind of epiphany in your life here lately? I mean, I noticed you, you've lost a lot of weight. If it's too personal, just don't answer. That's very personal, but I guess I did put that tweet out. I just saw it out this morning. I thought it was really cool. And, you know, I do those things early in the morning sometimes, just maybe they, someone's out there that needs some motivation going through some stuff. And so, you know, the ability to use the platform as a head coach and Twitter um, with that many people um, is really valuable. So um, I just thought that was really cool what you said. And um, I think we all go through things. Um, you know, I've been through a lot. I think they're well documented, you know, divorce, firings. And um, so, you know, now being here and daughter moving here and, you know, kind of get out of that world and get back into it. Some things change. I didn't think I'd be watching a Nicholas Sparks movie on Sunday night last night with, with six high school girls sitting there on the couch. So, and a dog. So I guess maybe things have changed. Kind of going off that, I mean, how long, I mean, has that kind of been your mindset in the morning, you know, with just the motivational stuff and all? Um, I don't know. I used to not be a morning person. I kind of changed that about probably <clears throat> two years ago and just um, like anything, those are habits. And, you know, I just kind of always said I wasn't. Once you say you're not a morning person, you're not going to be. And just kind of flipped that and started with um, working out in the morning and, you know, like this morning, 6 a.m. hot yoga before you come to work, and that will kind of get you moving in a good direction, you know. It'll make you not a night person because you'll be tired by the end of the night. I think I saw players walking juice uh, during the scrimmage, and was that, was that penalties for, uh, for getting penalties? What, what, what was that about? That would be a good idea. That wasn't. Um, I think some injured guys did that on their own. That was not a plan, but that would be a good idea. Yeah. Jump offside, you got to take juice for a walk after practice, so um, and clean up after him. That's going to be a good idea. See, you can learn from everybody. See, you guys are teaching us what to do as head coaches. Kind of going off that, I see that Juice got an Instagram account as well. I mean, have you had to warn him about the dangers of social media? Well, I think you guys know the truth. I don't run Juice's Twitter. Um, nor does Juice. So I didn't even know he had an Instagram. So, I mean, I guess we can still play along with it. It's really him and I'll need to discuss that with him when he gets back from training camp. Cause he goes to training camp in the morning from like eight till two every day. So, <clears throat> you know, we ship him off. I'm not sure if it's already out there, but you talked about another scrimmage this Saturday. Is that, do you plan on having that open to the public or? I don't think that is. I think we just did the first one because it's far enough from the game as you get closer, you know, um, just in this day and age. When you open it, you open it, and people come and video it, and you start to see scheme plays and where you're playing players. So, uh, unfortunately, we can't do that as we get closer to the game. All right, guys, thanks.